Hi guys, it's Adam for A-Strings. Uh, I'm here with uh, James from Godan Guitars and today we are going to be looking at the Art and Luth 3s for 2017. So, hello, hello. How are we doing? Good. Um, so, for those that don't know sort of Godan and um, yeah. sort of the sister brands, uh, what are the Art and Luth 3s and where they're from and who's... And who's where do they fit them? in? Yeah. Okay, so Godan, first of all, is... is a guy, this is his surname, Robert Godin. Mm -hmm. He um, is very much a um, pioneer of many things. He's been used as a, on a consultancy basis for lots of other guitar companies okay. because of the way that we build our guitars, um, our attention to detail and everything like that. Yeah. But in short, Godin uh, has a family of uh, acoustic brands, which yeah. include Seagull, Simon & Patrick, Art & Luthery, yeah. Um, and Le Patrie, which mm -hmm. is our nylon uh, yep. line, which I believe you stock here as well. Yep. Um, and then uh, Godan uh, logoed guitars are Fifth Avenue, uh, which are our sort of gypsy jazz um, uh, kind of thing. Yeah. You know, that kind of vibe with the multi axe, which is what we're most famous for at Godan. Right. If anyone Googles yeah. uh, multi axe, that will come up uh, yes. straight away. Very popular guitar. And we also have an entire line of electric guitars. Um, with sort of our versions of a strap telecaster we've got sort of gibson type peach kind of guitars but they've all got a very unique go down um twist to them yeah so um we that we are they are our own product you know um so uh, am i right in saying that these are made in canada yeah so so the big thing with what we do is um firstly we we offer great value for money for a canadian built product every single guitar that we build comes from Canada. Uh, made part, parts of it completely by hand in Canada. Um, the, um, we have five factories and uh, each factory is um, sort of set up and geared towards different sort of things. So a yeah. lot of the electrics are done in actually in New Hampshire, which is North, technically North America. Um, but yeah, so obviously we make a lot of the Le Patrie guitars in Le Patrie. That's the whole thing. So there's the, um, the, the factories are approximately 45 minutes to an hour away from each other. So yeah. Robert can go around all of the factories very, very easily and, yeah. and, and quite often will, um, will turn up unannounced at certain factories. And it's, um, it's, a, it's a great situation to be in because we're quite unique in the sense that we, we grow our own timber. Right, okay. So a lot of people don't do that because they yeah. don't have the facility to do it. Whereas as a company years ago, we were fortunate enough to get ourselves into a situation where we could buy land. Right. And now those, uh, and we've been using those trees for, for decades and decades and decades now, but we're, we're doing it very sensibly um, as a consequence. So we don't clear cut our own land. No. Yeah, yeah. You know, we take pockets of trees out and we use them. So we have um, Canadian redwood cedar, which grows on our own land, uh, wild cherry, which is the back of the, these guitars, and a lot of our uh, guitars, with, including Seagull and Simon and Patrick, we use wild cherry. So, it's, yeah, we're quite unique in that sense. So we have a lot of things that... Um, we benefit from purely because we grow our own trees. <laughs> yeah. So can you be a lot more selective then in that process because it's because they're yours and it's you know you're not sort of buying them limited to buy. Yeah. 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 We can. And um, you know we're not exclusively the only company. By the way, I should say there are lots of other um, sort of high. Well, some of the more high end um, guys like Taylor and stuff like that are, 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 have land, which is great, man. And it's cool because what it does is it, it's sens sensible forestry. So yeah. and we support that, which is. Great. Yeah. Um, but yes, in principle, it does mean that we can we can select. Um, I mean, we only select the best woods. But all of our tops. I mean, we don't make whether it's an Art and Luthery, a Le Patry, a Seagull, or a Simon and Patrick. We don't make a guitar that doesn't have a solid top. Okay. We do <coughs> all solid guitars, but we also do just solid top with a sort of laminate back and sides, wild cherry normally. Um, but we don't do anything below that. Everything has a solid top, and that top. On every line of guitars that we do, goes through a a, um, a process which we call pressure testing. Okay. So what that essentially means is every single top on our guitars has gone through uh, a test to make sure that it is the optimum thinness, but it is still structurally sound. Yeah. So we can get it super thin, but it ain't going to crack. So that's the uh, that's what pressure testing is. Um, so we will use. Timber, there's a certain range of guitars, for example, with Seagull called Rustic, okay. which are aesthetically, as pieces of timber, they don't look great. 
you know, so they've maybe got some marks on them, some natural, just kind of, you know, it's, it's the way that trees are. Trees yeah. aren't perfect. So for that range, we cover them in a, in a unique sunburst finish because as a piece of timber, it's, it's brilliant. It's great. It's fine. It sounds amazing. It's, it's past yeah. the pressure testing um, and we're not going to waste it. Yeah. You know, so yes, we do pick the best timber, but we also use a timber that aesthetically might not look as good, but is fine. You know? Yeah. And I think it's, you know, there seems to be a, um, an opinion now where people tend to come away from maybe the perfect top. You know, yeah. it's, you know, there's, there's sort of a nice aesthetic to a knotted piece of wood or, yeah. you know, yeah. I, um, so I think, yeah, that, you know, I think the perfect book matching has its place, but yeah, you know, there, there, you know, there's, there's beauty in the imperfections yeah. of, of wood. And there is, the, there is going to be less of perfect timber. It's just yeah. a fact, unfortunately, you know, it's the way, it's the way it is. There's, there's some great companies out there as well as us that are doing what they can to, to preserve timber and, and, and sense of the forestry, as I said. Yeah. Um, but us owning, owning our own land basically means we can, we can police it. Yeah. And we can make sure that we use forest sensibly. Yeah. Because it won't always be there. <laughs> In terms of the Art and Lutherese, then, yeah, what was the, what was the sort of the th the thought process and sort of what did, what what did you guys want to sort of achieve with this line, you know, um, with, with these guitars? Yeah, and... sure. So these these are completely brand new. So Art and Lutherese, a brand, very briefly started in '95, and it started out as a um, a really entry level uh, guitar. Robert uh, Robert Godin loved the name Art and Luthery because it, it, it gave, um, in his mind, uh, parents that might be shopping for their, for their child's first guitar as a name, Art and Luthery. It sounds kind of, yeah, it sounds like a name yeah. I can trust, you know? Yeah. Um, so we, we aimed Art and Luthery <coughs> at the start at being this entry-level uh, brand. But what happened over time was um, inflation and things changed and, and the, the price point of the guitars kind of leveled out at about where Siegel and Simon and Patrick are. Mm -hmm. um, so they're still and were still incredibly good value for money but they've kind of lost their unique thing which was that they were really really quite sort of cheap basically yeah. but, and, and, and you know that had been lost unfortunately over time so as a consequence the models um, weren't uh, playing it to their sort of best strength anymore so what we wanted to do was essentially go back to the drawing board and give the entire line a uh, well, we got rid of everything. <laughs> right. Basically, we kept the name, and we we just got rid of everything. And with these, we've got the great value for money back. Yeah. Um, we've still got pressure tested tops. Um, we use Adirondack spruce bracing, so um, okay. all of that sort of stuff. So if you don't know what Adirondack is, Adirondack is the best type of spruce you can money can buy, and we use it as our bracing because it grows in our garden. <laughs> so. We're uh, very lucky because Adirondack spruce is a very premium, premium timber. Right, okay. If you look at any pre-war Martin or Gibson, it will be Adirondack spruce bracing. We use it on everything. So we're still using that. We've got every one of these guitars, whether it's the Legacy, which is this one, the Parlor, or the Dreadnought, are electro. Okay. Um, and uh, they're gig ready for that reason. Um, so, yeah, we've kind of gone back to that whole thing of let's get as much guitar for, for the customer's budget as we can. Um, but the big thing is aesthetically, let's update things. Yeah. Um, and ironically, we've moved forward by going backwards because we've kind yeah. of got this 1920s, 30s, vintage era type thing going on. I think that's, for me, you know, as, as soon as these came in um, and you see, you know, you see the sort of press shots and different things, mm. it was... If, 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 like I said to you earlier, it felt like that kind of barn fine guitar. Yeah, it, yeah, you know, yeah. It's just that thing of, this looks like, you know, this looks like a 20s, you know, a 20s Gibson or something like that. Yeah. But it looks like it, it is from the 20s. Yeah. You know, so you've got that sort of really, really cool sort of aged 
look without it, you know, while still having, you know, all your tuners are going to be solid, your electrics are brand new. Exactly. You know? And there's a lot of things that you might not be able to pick up on the video, but like these are aged at the top, the tuners. Obviously, we've got open gear tuners, um, uh, which, you know, add to the authenticity of that kind of era. The, um, but the, the big, big thing is, is that obviously when you're buying a guitar, looks, you've got to want to pick it up. Yes. There are a lot of guitars that, uh, for your money, you can buy that look quite good, that might not have that build quality. These are both of those things. So we have the build quality. We have the, um, you know, the, the, the right timbers. We've got high quality hardware. As you said, electronics, modern touches, like a cutaway option. You can get this as a non-cutaway as well. Um, but aesthetically, it's all just gone up several notches. Yeah. So in terms of finishes, mm. so we've got two in with us today. Yeah. Um, so this is our, what's the, what are we calling this? Shall I pick it up? Yeah. This is called Bourbon Burst. So in short, the entire series, you have three shapes. There's only one we don't have here today, but you will yeah. be stocking it soon, which yeah. is the Dreadnought. Mm -hmm. um, so there's a Dreadnought, which we call the Americana. Right. These are a concert hall, which I'm holding uh, in my lap, which we call Legacy. And as I said, they come, and the Dread comes as well as a cutaway and a non-cutaway option. Mm -hmm. And then we have the um, the Roadhouse, which is our parlour. Yep. In terms of finishes, Bourbon Burst, which is that guy down there. These are faded black. And the only other finish we don't have here, which you will be stocking, is um, Tennessee Red. Right. And then at NAM this year, just gone January uh, 2017, we announced a um, like a faded cream colour. Um, so there's actually four finishes, and all of the finishes are interchangeable between all of the shapes. So you can get all shapes and all finishes. Exactly. Yeah, so it's nice and simple. Yeah. Um, and touching on the electronics side of it, mm. all models, all shapes have the option of both, electric or no, non-electric? No, they're all electric. Right. Literally, there, is a, there isn't a non-electro option. Okay. I mean, the, the thinking with that is that a lot of, um, a lot of sort of, store owners these days, are, the feedback that we get, we listen to our dealers very, very closely. Um, and a lot of people have said that the price point that these are hitting, it's got to be an electro. Very few, if any at all, have said they, they want them as a non-electro, because it's just, so many people do you know, mic nights, yep. busking, yep. you know, playing, they're at college and they, they want to start a band and, you know, it, it's that kind of thing where it's, it's gig ready to go. Um, if we did a non Electric. I don't know. I mean, it, there's no plans to, but uh, the, the overriding thing is let's make these a gig ready instrument yeah. that, that is ready to go. So that, Definitely. again, it highlights the, the value for money the fact that you've, you've got everything that I said with regards to build quality and electronics. Yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah I definitely find that, especially with, with people that come into the, into the shop, uh, they will always be drawn to an electric low yeah. guitar rather than, um, rather than something without, because it's there if you need it. If you don't want it, it's exactly. It's, you know, it's not it, going to do any harm. And it doesn't. <laughs> yeah. So it's not. You know, it doesn't change the sound of an instrument. It's, no. You know. Yeah. All of our guitars come with um, come with these on them, which is a, a, a essentially it's a QCC thing. But if you look at that, you probably probably won't pick up on the camera. But that has been hand checked. That is pen marks. They're individually checked. and they're actually different signatures. As well. And they're different signatures for different. So you've got neck bridge installation signed off. Um, you know the nut install, uh, string install. Different people checking it all the way along the line, all the way down there. Yeah. So that's on every single guitar that we sell, whether it's Simon and Patrick, Go Down, whatever. Yeah. We do that for everything. We we have a um, we have a list occasionally um, which you have access to um, as a dealer, which is what we call our SF uh, list, which stands for Slight Floor. And what we sign off as B stock essentially is is ridiculous, because you know it, it it's better than than some people's firsts, you know, because yeah. the, the, the level of at the factory is is so high um, that you know if we're talking well, what does a B stock Art and Luthery look like? It might have a bit of a blemish on on one of the finishes, 
we're not going to waste the timber. It's a perfectly good guitar, and we'll put our hands up and go, it's got a slight blemish on that one, but it's a B-stock item. We'll, dis we'll discount it. You know, yeah. It's rare. It doesn't happen very often, but we make 200,000 guitars a year, okay. and they're all amazing. They yeah. play great, but you will get the odd one with the finish, and, and we will go, and there'll be a sticker inside saying, it's B-stock. We saw it. You know, so we're very open, we're very honest, and uh, we look for perfection in everything we do. Yeah. Um, so, talking about the guitars that we have in, mm. um, so one thing I wanted to sort of touch on was uh, how these guitars feel to play. Um, the, the comments that keep coming back from customers that try them yeah. is how nice the necks feel. So, I just wanted to know whether there was a sort of specific you know, sort of design process where, you know, you decided these neck, this type of neck felt different because the seagulls are very, very different necks. Yes. So I just wanted to know sort of, you know, what the thought process was in terms of these uh, compared to the others, you know? Yeah, that's a good question. So, so historically to answer that, I'll go back to Seagull. Seagull uh, is a brand which has, a, um, on the whole, you can get slimmer versions, but on the whole has a wider nut. So it has like a 47 mil nut on, on, on the S6 stuff. Uh, that's one of the best selling points of that brand, in fact. So if you're looking for a guitar uh, at a reasonable price with a wider nut, yeah, look at Seagull. Historically, as I said, Art & Luther was our be beginner's brand. Um, we didn't want to put a wider nut on a beginner's guitar. So we've got 43mm yeah. nut, so 1 in 11 sixteenths approximately. Um, so you haven't got to overstretch your hands. We didn't see the point in changing that for these. We could keep it normal keep it the way that it has been with art and Lou three so we w didn't want to completely start again with with the brand in in the sense that we start changing nut widths that have been the same for for you know the last however long it's been you yeah know, sort of 22 23 years um so we kept them at 111 16 the what we do is we 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 bevel the round here on the fret on the fret ends are sort of slightly beveled um so sort of fit and finish of these and the feel feels expensive <laughs> yeah. to, to kind of try and describe to the people that might be watching this it feels like if you did a blindfold test you might think this guitar is double what it actually costs yeah um and that's because of our as i've said our machining and the way that we build our guitars we we, we take great care in everything we do yeah um so there's no sharp fret ends no um it's a, a relatively thin uh feel but it's not uh uncomfortably thin um, and it does open up a little bit just as you come up here what we do which is quite interesting which might be a nice thing to add to that answer is we we route out underneath the fingerboard okay. so um, essentially the, the fingerboard isn't sitting flush with the top all the way there's a little paddle underneath the fingerboard supporting it so it's kind of suspended slightly in the middle here right and what that helps so that it doesn't prevent entirely that's the disclaimer but it does help with that happening over time yeah so when you have your guitar for a couple of years and you've noticed the actions getting higher one of the causes could be that the fingerboard has been moving around on the top yeah. and then it pushes the action up this helps with that we also support the join here we've got it's an integrated set neck so there's two little pins here which go in it's not a removable neck it's not a bolt-on neck but these two little pins sit in there, and we have these maple dowels that sit here on the guitar, either side, and it just reinforces that join. And a good tip if you're buying a guitar, and it doesn't necessarily have to be one of ours, look at the neck join. That's a good sign. That's a big giveaway on the quality of that instrument. If you can see light, that's bad. <laughs> if you can see glue marks and fingerprints, that's another bad sign. But if it's a really tidy join, like this obviously is, um, and everything feels secure and true, um, chances are it's a good guitar and it's going to hold its tuning yeah. very well for you. We have a double action truss rod in these as well. Okay. So uh, we can you can make minute neck adjustments on them um, if you are having an intonation issue, which can be caused by atmospheric conditions. You were saying in here sometimes it gets a bit hot and it gets cold. Yeah, yeah there's, you know, you, you're always battling against... The elements. Yeah, the elements <laughs> you know, season to season, it's always the same. Yeah. Um, the one thing you said about as well was um, sort of the edges. Yeah. Uh, and the one thing that I noticed when, because that was the first one I picked up when they came in, and the first thing I said was, it "Feels like it's rolled. It feels like the edges yeah, it are is rolled, slightly. and it feels like yeah. which people look for because yeah. people want that. They want a guitar that feels like 
it's been played for years and years because exactly. they don't want none of that. Yeah. So that yeah. was the first thing I noticed when I picked, yeah. picked that one up. Yeah. Um, the, so the, it's interesting that it's actually a you know it's a purposeful thought out thing. Absolutely. Everything everything we do, there's a thought process to it. Yeah. Robert is a is a man on a mission, very much so. He wants he he still gets excited by um by guitars and by improving them by no means. I mean, these are proof. We're not west, uh, resting on our laurels. We're always trying to push things. We're always trying to make the best guitar that we can possibly make and go down to the minute details that we can. Um, and ultimately, yes, there are lots of guitars out there and there are lots of really good other guitar companies. Yeah. We are just one of them, but we believe how we do it is the best way. And it certainly gives you value for money. Like when you, when you compare what price point these are hitting and you compare other things, um, you won't find spec for spec anything um, close to what we're offering for the same money. Yeah, I, and I think it's absolutely crazy that even you referred to it as you know, this was designed with beginners in mind. It's just mm. there's just yeah, there's nothing comparable for for this price that you'll get. You know, you'll have the parents and kids coming in, and you know they'll be looking at the guitars for a certain amount of money. Yeah. Um, yeah, and, and you know a lot of the times it's it's, it's going to be more. Um, seasoned players that will know about solid top, solid, you know, solid yeah. backs and things. Yeah. Uh, yeah, but for, you know, for the price point and you know, to, to say that these are with a beginner in mind, and the quality is is wild. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and there's and well, you know, Robert. Going back to the start of it, you know, Robert's whole thing was his whole philosophy was why are world class mu um, musical instruments so expensive, and because a lot of musicians can't afford, you know, five thousand pounds. You know, so his whole thing from the start in nineteen seventy two, uh, he started a brand called Norman. That was our first acoustic yeah. brand. Um, I want to make an amazing instrument affordable. Yeah, and that is still the philosophy across our entire line of guitars. So under the, everything that Godin do, we don't have anything really above two and a half grand we have lots of stuff between the sort of three and a half hundred pound and an 800 pound mark yeah which is the heart of the industry really it's the, that's where a lot of people buy guitars are in those price points yeah and they always have regardless of inflation those are really the strong price points so we excel in that and our higher end stuff as in like the stuff over that price point is is, a, is amazing as well and it actually still maintains that value for money you know even the really expensive stuff if it was by somebody else it, again it might be that whole thing it probably cost double you know um but where we excel as i say is that that middle price point and in pushing things forward we never forget that we never forget we want to be affordable we don't yeah. want to um ostracize beginners and uh, just appeal to high-end customers because we can cover that as well, as I said, but we never forget that. So that is the, essentially yeah. it's the principle of the entire company. That's amazing. Yeah. Um, well, like we said earlier, these guitars along with uh, the Seagulls uh, and Godins are all available through us. Um, we've got the four models. Uh, yeah, so you're, um, literally everything is available to you. Yeah. Um, all the time. Well, if you haven't got it in stock, we can get stuff out to you very, very quickly. Um, and uh, your finishes are—you've got all of them, I think. So, and all the finishes available from now, because obviously Nam was very recent. Was yeah, good. yeah, we ship in, we ship in all of them. We've um, we, with Godan, the way that we we like to do things is when we launch a new product, we like to build it, <laughs> have them ready, have them ready, and yeah. that's exactly what we've done. Uh, we've actually in the UK. Um, we've been we've been um, discussing these and selling these since December. Okay. Um, so we actually pre nammed them. Um, that's what A strings did. You had them pre nam. Um, so you sort of got in right at the start, actually ahead yeah. of uh, some people as well, which is which is which is cool. So you guys have, have had them for a while, but um, the feedback has just been it's just been amazing. Yeah. And if you are genuinely looking, look at some other brands. Look at lots of other guitars. You, you know the guys down here have got stock of a lot of stuff. And, and, and find the one that's right for you. But if you're looking for something that, as I say, is amazingly good value for money, that looks cool, that's got great build quality, lifetime warranty as well, you know, it's like, 
you'd be hard pushed to get something that that's North American made that gives you all of those things. You yeah. Know? So it's um definitely worth checking these out. Definitely, definitely. Thank you, my friend. Cool, man. With that, we're, we're gonna have a little noodle, and uh, yeah, any uh, any information you need will be on the website, and there's gonna be a few follow up videos uh, where we're gonna look at each guitar um, and play a lot more from them than uh, than us naturally. So uh, yeah, so we're gonna have a little noodle, and we'll see you soon.